lately have been tasked with running an audio feature extraction upon upload of sounds into some space on the web. One of the benefits of today's cloud computing environment is that you don't need a full server stack to do this anymore. The buzzword serverless, of course, doesn't mean that there are no servers involved anymore, rather they're being kept behind the curtain. The benefits of such a setup are a more scalable, planable, potentially more ecological way of using server resources as you only pay for the usage, CPU time storage you actually need. On the downside in reality, you are limited to a few major platforms for setting up such an environment. The largest and most well-known are of course Amazon, Google and Microsoft, resulting in an even stronger monopolization and vendor lock-in. There are initiatives like Open Functions as a Service, Open FAAS, trying to wrest this market power from the big ones, but then again, you need to host it on your own server again, which only makes sense for bigger projects. Anyway, what are the steps of creating such a serverless setup? First, we need a place where uploaded files can be stored. Most cloud providers call this a bucket. If a file is uploaded into this bucket, a function is triggered. This function can, and in most cases will have, side effects like three, storing some metadata into a cloud database. We will be implementing all three of these steps in this video. I've chosen the Google Cloud Platform for this because it provides the simplest way of customizing a Python environment, which we will need for our implementation. For the rest of this tutorial, I will assume that you have a Google account and are familiar with the Google Cloud Console. If not, there are a lot of guides out there on how to set up an account. First of all, we need to set up a new project. I will call this snibbles-audio-analysis and wait a few seconds for the initialization to complete. Next, we are going to set up a bucket to hold our data. Scroll down to storage and click create bucket. We have to give it a unique name here and select an appropriate location, else we can go with the defaults here. Let's create a Firestore database next. We have to choose between native and data store mode, which is beyond the scope of this video, but in our case, it doesn't really matter. We select the location, click create database and off we go. Now we don't really need to do this because it will get created on demand, but let's just start a collection called sounds here. It also adds a default empty document, which we can delete. All right, now off to our analysis logic. Click Cloud Functions and enable the Cloud Functions API. Next, click Create Function. It will be presented with a form that asks for a function name and some other variables. Let's call it Analyze underscore audio and give it a little more RAM just in case. Next, we need to set the trigger and this is where our bucket comes in. We choose Cloud Storage and select the bucket we created before. After all, we want the logic to run whenever an object is created in the bucket. For our runtime, we switch to Python 3.7. The simplest way to add the function logic is to do it in line here, which I will do in this case for demonstration purposes. Let's first add our dependencies to requirement.txt. We're going to need NumPy, the Python clients for Google's Cloud Storage and Firestore, as well as Librosa. This is a nice feed of the Google Cloud Platform. It will install these dependencies automatically for you. Last I checked, this wasn't so easy with Amazon and the other competitors. Let's take a quick look at Librosa. It's a Python package for music and audio analysis, which is quite easy to use. From the feature extraction list, we'll select the MFCC portion, and save them to the database. Okay, back to our Python code. First, we rename the function to analyze. I'm going to enlarge this editor here. Let's start by extracting relevant information from the event dictionary. The exact contents of this collection depend on what trigger you choose. In our case, we are interested in the file name and the bucket name. Next, we need to access the 
exact blob of the uploaded object. And for this, we need Google's storage client. So we import storage from google.cloud and instantiate a storage client. Now we ask it for the bucket using the bucket name, get the blob associated with the file name and store the blob name in a variable. Since all function executions are ephemeral, meaning the runtime environment is completely discarded afterwards, we have to store our audio data in a temporary file. For this, we import temp file and ask it to make one. Now we download the file into the fresh file. Now we can begin analyzing the audio. We import Librosa and read in the audio data using Librosa's load method, which returns the sample data stored in Y and the sample rate stored in SR. We apply two transformations that are very common in audio analysis. We modify the signal and downsample it to 22050 Hz, because the most salient information tends to lie in the lower bands anyway. Now let's actually calculate the MFCs. Observe that I made a mistake here. I just told you to downsample and modify, but take the original sample data anyway. Whatever, for demonstration purposes, let's just extract the first 12 MFCs. Now using numpy.mean, we calculate the average for each MFCC over time using a list comprehension. Finally, let's write our analysis data into the Firestore database. For that, we import UUID to generate unique IDs and Google's Firestore client, which we initialize with firestore.client. Let's generate a new UID and create a new document in the database, specifying the collection and the UID as the document's name. We set some data, namely the blob name, the file name, the length and samples, as well as those MFCCs. Now we can click create and wait a few seconds for Google to set up our function. Let's open the database connection and the bucket in another tab. We upload some test data. Note that the audio files need to have a bit depth of 16, otherwise it won't work. And after a few seconds, our analysis data arrives in the database, voila.